What is going on everybody? Hey Munchining here back again with another Pokemon trader card game on my deck tech. Today we're taking a look at Dialga V-Star. I am a huge fan of Dialga V-Star. I have been ever since it was released in Astral Radiance and I think it's finally got what it takes to actually be a really solid deck in the format now. Like it had a pretty good showing at EUIC, lots of interesting ways to build it. So I've kind of crafted a new list based around all those new deck ideas and I'm really excited to show it off today. If you don't know, Dialga V-Star is a really powerful card that comes at a really big cost. Star Kronos does 220 damage for five metal energy, but if you can pull it off, you can actually take another turn right after that one. And Metal Blast isn't half bad either, doing 40 damage plus 40 more for every metal energy attached to this Pokemon. Now we're powering Dialga up with the likes of the new Matang from Temporal Forces. Metal Maker lets you look at the top four cards of your deck, put any metal energy you find there, attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like, and then put the rest of the cards at the bottom, this increases your chances of hitting more metal energy with the following metal makers, which is why this card is so good as opposed to something like the old Magnazone. Then we're rocking a 3-3 line of Dialga and a 4-4 line of Matang, respectively. One Radiant Greninja to help us draw, along with one Mew EX to help us draw, and we can use genome hacking in select scenarios as well against the likes of Lost Zone Giratina. Our Mew is also good when you boss up Radiant Greninja and then you genome hacking it to get some snipe damage as well. So Mew has a lot of uses in this deck, along with the Zamazenta from Crown Zenith, especially good right now because Retaliate will do 100 damage plus 120 more if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, which means you can respond to KOs with things, you know, if Chempow KOs a Dialga, respond to it with the Zamazenta, putting that one prize Pokemon in play, and it can't get knocked out by Iron Hands. Now this deck really shines and is really different than current Dialga builds, thanks to the trainers in the deck. We have two copies of Jacques, which is kind of the star of the show, then you just grab two evolution Pokemon and put them into your hand. So the kind of the way this deck is built is like, I don't really care what my opponent does. I'm literally just going to grab my evolutions, my Matangs, my Dialgas, and just go from there. That's why we're rocking two Capturing Aroma, as well as three Great Ball in the deck, in order to help us just find Pokemon without having to discard too many cards. Now, we do have these Ultra Balls as well. If we need to thin down our hand to use Restart, we also have Buddy Buddy Poffin, because that card is just so strong at getting our Beldums into play. Four Nest Ball as well in here, just for some more guaranteed basic search. And in terms of the other supporters, we've got two Boss, three Aono, and one Cypher Maniac to guarantee us cards when we need them. Our ace spec of choice being Prime Catcher, as well as two Super Rods to shuffle energy back into the deck, and 16 total Metal Energies is the name of the game here. This list is insanely fun to play, and I actually think it's really strong, so we're just gonna hop into some games and get some dubs with Dialga V-Star. Just wanted to give a quick thank you to the lovely sponsors of the Hitmon Channing channel. If you need codes, you know where to go. Head over to ptcglstore.com and use code Hitmon to get 5% off your order. And be sure to check out Pokemon.gg, the best Pokemon card tracker and deck builder there is. You can track your entire collection and see its value, build decks quickly and easily, create custom wish lists, and so much more. Join Pokemon.gg by clicking the link below and use code Hitmon to get $5 off a pro membership. These are some great products for some great prices. Thank you to my sponsors for supporting the channel and thanks to you for supporting me too and now let's get right back into the video we get to call a coin flip over here tails never fails as i always say so we're gonna flip that coin and it's gonna be heads our opponent will get to choose if we go first or second here we do want to be going first we have a lot of ball search in this deck just get your guys down then we have you know a lot of ways to find our evolutions going second's not that bad either because you can use supporters like iono if you want to reset your hand this is a pretty fine hand we got over here again we have a lot of potential and the mulligans will help us as well one mulligan looks to be a dino box deck which actually shouldn't give us too much trouble because of that extra turn we can really offset them we'll draw an extra card which is an ultra ball kind of perfect and our opponent's going to start with the flutter main and now kind of sucks that we can't use the matang in the active but we will retreat it this Beldum, and then we'll be able to successfully use our Matang in order to get um, a bunch of energies on our Dialga. Our game plan here, we use our Dialga, we can mix up with the Zamazenta, go to a fully single prize board, and that Zamazenta is going to be tough for them to KO. They'll need to use a Roaring Moon, and it will need to be able to do 160 damage because of um, Zamazenta's ability. So we're going to see what we draw into here. Another Matang is fine. Start with the Capturing Aroma see what we're working with it's going to be tails which is amazing and we'll want to get ourselves the dialga first and foremost we have a lot of other options in the deck um so we'll just see what's going on over here put the dialga down and the great ball gives us more options i'm thinking the rating greninja is the best because it will let us just simply get a little bit more cards into play here now we'll discard that card draw some more 
Capturing Aroma once again. Don't fail me. Give me that Tails never fails and it's a Tails. So I'm going to want to put another Beldum into play here. It's going to take them some turns before they can rack up enough damage to actually do anything monumental. So I want to attach this Dialga and just go for a pass. This Ultra Ball can net me Mew next turn, which can draw me more cards. We have Double Matang. If they don't get a KO against this Beldum, they're going to basically need to find a Sada and you know get another get a fighting energy in the discard pile in order to actually do anything here D dumping defiance band is interesting that could help them ramp to higher numbers but for now they're just going to keep drawing concealed cards them starting the flutter main isn't too good but if they get a poker gear they get a sada so they could potentially get an attack off this turn and knock this beldum off but they're going to actually opt to go for the double poker gear the Explorer's Guidance this turn I find really fascinating. Not sure how many switching cards this deck plays. This is a little bit different than my build. They play the Great Tusk, I don't play the Great Tusk, that kind of thing. But our opponent is going to be able to at least get some stuff going. They have the Flutter main, so it's Manual Attachment and it's a pass. So we could aim to go for a Star Kronos here. Um, I'm thinking the way I want to do this though, I want to start with the Concealed cards. We're pretty likely to draw into another energy or two. I'll put the Matang down on the bench. I'm kind of sold on going for at least Dialga in the active this turn. So I'll retreat the Beldum first. We'll lead with the Dialga. Now we can get all of our guys out. Three energy in the discard means a Super Rod play is the correct play. And we'll put these back in the deck. Just try and Metal Make our way into a Star Kronos here. One is not too good. We need three off this other Metal Maker, and I think we can do it. I, I have hope, to be honest. Another one is not too bad because that still guarantees us the KO on this Flutter main. And this Ultra Ball here, we're just going to get Dialga. Again, I'm not expecting this thing to get KO'd. Our opponent seems to be having a little bit of a tough time getting some Pokemon in play. So we'll just go for the Metal Blast here. I didn't even... Oh yeah, Flutter main's weak to Metal. That makes sense. So we didn't even need to go that far, but we have a pretty solid turn. Again, with Dialga, speed is no longer the name of the game. Cypher Maniac will guarantee us whatever we need if it needs to be two energy, or if we top deck an energy, we can get ourselves Mew and something else and just kind of stack our deck and get going from there. It can get us a Prime Catcher and a boss for the following turns. Lots of good stuff thanks to Cypher Maniac. Now they lead the Coridon. They need to find a Fighting Energy off this Sada and these Trekking Shoes. Their Roaring Moon is getting powered up, but they opted to get rid of that Fighting Energy, maybe going for a Switch or something like that. Never mind, they have the Earthen Vessel to kind of expend more resources, get more cards in the discard pile. Right now, they're doing three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more damage or 90 more damage with Roaring Moon, which is not even enough. Well, it's enough to two-shot our Dialga, I will say. So these moons are going to be a little bit of a challenge to deal with, um, but we're already pretty ahead. We're going to get two prizes ahead now. They do have the Primordial Beatdown, which is going to be really strong for a lot of damage. That Ancient Booster is not going to do too, too much to us again. Yeah, they're doing 150, so that's a little bit tough for us to deal with. We get Jacques, which we don't quite need, and now I'm thinking the Cypher Maniac. Okay, we'll start with the Metal Maker, see what we get. Two energy, perfect. That is all I need. So the way I want to do this now is I don't even want to use this next Metal Maker. I'm going to Cypher Maniac and Cypher Maniac stack my deck for my following turn. Now, what do I want to grab? I definitely want to put, I think, a Mew EX into play. Or do I want to just get a Dialga and maybe another supporter? Like Mew will come off the top and that'll let me draw one more card. And that additional card should likely be a nest ball so I can kind of get another Dialga set up. I think that's pretty okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because from now, we'll just go for the Star Kronos. It'll get rid of this Coridon and we can draw some more cards um, going forward here. And get a prize card. It's going to be an Ultra Ball, which is actually really good to follow up with later. They're going to lead that next Coridon. We are going to drop for turn. Oh, Mew EX, it's so nice to see you. We'll restart for one over here, and that'll get, give us the Nest Ball. The Nest Ball will give us that other Dialga. Could get Zamazenta, but I want to save that for a little bit later. And for now, we we'll start with the Metal Making. Actually, Jacques is probably not too bad here, because it'll let us just thin a little bit more. Matang for discard fodder with the Ultra Ball later to get us the Zamazenta when this Dialga goes down. And we want to get our second Dialga powered up a little bit 
Don't need to commit to it as much. It's only got to do 200 damage. So that is three energy on it is going to let us do 160. They're already down a bunch of booster energy capsules. So I'm not, again, not worried about it. Metal Blast over here. Going to knock out this Coridon and let us get an, you know, an extra prize ahead. We have Zamazenta to mix things up a little bit. Their prize map, though, becomes uh, Dialga Dialga Mew EX. So that's going to be a little bit interesting to navigate around. They do have Counter Catcher open right now. They have Prime Catcher. A lot of ways that we could still lose this game, but they're going for Asada here. And they don't, seems like they don't play a Mew EX or anything of that like. So I'm going to try and go for a big Iono play later on. We didn't play any Ionos, so I want to get this hand nice and big where they feel confident, then put it right to the bottom. This would be a key turn to get an Iono uh, play down. As of right now, we have five, eight, we have nine energy accounted for when our deck plays 16, so just over half. So we can easily get the Samazenta into play, like no problem at all. Double Matang is should be all we need to close out this game. There's an Awakening Drum drawing them three more cards, getting another Ancient in the discard pile. And now they're ramping up to one hit KO potential on Dialga, which is a little bit concerning. This Ancient Booster Energy Capsule means we're gonna need one more energy to KO this uh, Roaring Moon off of these Matangs here. So we'll see what we can do. I'd like to actually return KO with a Zamazenta here, force them to kind of work around it, and uh, we'll see what we're able to pull off. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think we'll be able to do it. They're getting rid of a counter catcher. Just, I don't know why, just to thin, I guess, another ancient card down. Maybe they will opt to counter catcher up this other Dialga, knock that KO. But no, it's just Vengeance Fletching for 230, and that's gonna knock out our Dialga V Star. They're gonna get two prize cards off that. So again, like I said, this is a key turn for Iono. That would be really, really nice. We're gonna get a Great Ball, and I just want to Ultra Ball here. I want our Zemazenta. No uh, strings attached, pretty much. Put this down. Put the Dialga down. And now, this is kind of, you know, how the deck rolls. We don't need this Great Ball. I do want to start Metal Making. And I kind of have to decide if I want to commit to one or the other. We get nothing from this. So, this kind of, this other Metal Maker will determine what we do. We get two here. Um, and this, we're doing 160 right now. We'll need one more on this Dialga, or we can double commit to the Zemazenta to see if we draw one. A little more risky. I'd rather just do it this way, and then we force them to have boss later on, and we can start with a restart for three. We'll probably find a Metal Energy anyway. We did, but just one, so I'll throw that on the Zamazenta. And now we'll go for our Metal Blast for 200 taking out this Roaring Moon. And I'm actually also still a fan of keeping this Dialga in the active. They need to work a little bit harder to KO it. Then if we can go into the Mew EX, retreat back into our Zamazenta, and then get, force them to find a boss later in the game, that could be the key to the matchup here. We'll see what they do. They could still counter catch with the Zamazenta up, but that wouldn't really work too well. A superior energy retrieval coming down. I see a lot of people play this card in this deck. I'm not a huge fan of it personally. Um, I'd rather just play an extra Ultra Ball, but it does have uses. You can get some energies back if you're lacking them, which it seems to be what they're doing here. They can get all those energy cards back, which is going to be really good to get shuffled into their deck, or towards the bottom, I should say. They can conceal cards, get some even more cards, and we'll see what they do. They should have enough now to KO this Roaring Moon, or maybe they just barely whiff it. They need two more Ancient cards, I believe in order to actually KO this Roaring Moon here. So they might opt to, opt to preemptively boss up the Mew EX. That's another possibility here. But we'll see what we decide, what they decide to do. They are going to boss, and it's going to be the Mew. They don't have enough to KO the Dialga just yet, which makes a lot of sense. But now we can hopefully get ourselves uh, a hit with the Zamazenta here. But this is risky because now we have no way to draw into Iono other than Metal Energies. So... Um, if we find a metal energy off the top, that'll be really good in letting us get a, uh, at least a Hail Mary draw with concealed cards over here. And I don't know what they're quite waiting for. It seems they will go for the Mew EX. Then if we can get Zamazenta and force them to go through it, we will win the game. But we got to find this Iono. There's the Vengeance fletching 540 damage. That's a lot of damage. They were just like 10 or 20 damage short here. Leave with the Zamazenta. We gotta hit the Zamazenta. And we're gonna top deck a Metal Energy. So I wanna start by burning some Poffins, probably. We can actually burn the Buddy Buddy, thin a Beldum out, 
but first we'll just burn one, then the other. We have three Ionos in the deck, like there's a decent shot that we hit it. Um, so we'll just burn the first one, the second one will net us a Beldum. And I'll start metal making, see what we get here. We get a metal energy, no Ionos to the bottom, which is good. So we can attach this to the Zamazenta. I don't want to risk putting Ionos to the bottom, so I'll start with that concealed cards. It'll draw me two, and we get an Iona, which is perfect. We could Prime Catcher something up, potentially grabbing this uh, Raiding Greninja, but I don't really think that's a good call, so I'd rather just go for... Hmm. I'll just go for the Iono here. Iono them. They got two cards to work with, three from a draw. A lot of their energies are in the bottom of their deck, so I'm not super concerned about Greninja. And for now, I just want to retaliate, doing a big 220, knocking out that Roaring Moon. Really great to have that single prize attacker in here. And now, literally, all we need to win is for them to not KO our Dialga on the bench. See, that was the uh, struggle with putting a um, putting that Mew down early. We really needed to. They have a Poke Gear though, and they get a Sada, so they're gonna need to find the. Pro they don't have Prime Catcher. They have Counter Catcher for sure. They with that other Poke Gear. They're leading to Sada into the Counter Catcher. They've played one, one boss. We'll see what they get. Um, even if they get the Counter Catcher, they need another Energy off this Roaring Moon. They still need a lot to get there. They're probably debating: Do I go for the Reading Greninja play? They for sure found at least one Energy. Here's a Nest Ball. Thinning down the deck a little bit, as I said. It's not really possible for them to win unless they KO with the Roaring Moon here. They can't KO with this Coridon. Um, and then if they don't KO, we just retreat and we blow it up with our good pal Dialga V-Star. There's a Counter Catcher play. And they're going to try to install a Matang. Now, we should actually have enough energy to win the game here. I'm going to double check by going for this Ultra Ball. We sh I don't think we have any Matangs in the deck just yet. We have one energy. So what I will do is thin out this Dialga V-Star. And yeah, all we need to do is hit this energy off Metal Maker. We don't hit it. We have one more Metal Maker to, to, to use over here. And we do get it. So we do get the dub. Like I said, we just needed to have them with an attack one turn. And we even put our extra liability into play. So came down to the wire a little bit. But Dialga V-Star still able to close it out. The power of Star Kronos is just too, too good. We got the dub against Dino Box. We get to call a coin flip, and Tails never fails, is what I always say. So we're gonna flip that coin, and it's gonna be heads. Unfortunately, the opponent's gonna get to choose if they wanna go first or second here. Honestly, we are the ones that want to be going first with this deck, ironically. We don't play any TM Evo, nothing along those lines, and we're kind of just going to want to get our guys into play. Our opponent's gonna go first here, which is going to be a bummer for us, but maybe we can use some things like Iono if we need to. And this is a pretty solid hand. I actually don't really have much to complain about. Uh, they got the Zard's leaves, but is this Zard is the true question. Now we're gonna just take a look and see what happens. There's the Radiant Zard lead, which could be a bit tragic for us, but I doubt they'll wanna commit to that in the early game. There's their Charmander going on the bench, and we'll see kind of what they do from here. Another Nest Ball, or a Nest Ball, I should say. Gonna get an Arceus. So this is a Charizard Arceus build. They are kind of popping up a little bit more than before, but they're just gonna pass on it over to us now. We get some Metal Energies. And I wanna start off with this Great Ball. We get Matan, we get Dialga V-Star. None of them super relevant, because I do plan on Ionoing this turn. So I guess, I, I don't even want any of them, to be honest. I'll go for the Nest Ball. I want to grab myself the Radiant Greninja. Get some more cards drawn here. I can also discard and I can use Metal Coating this turn. Um, Mew is a good Pokemon to have, just not quite yet. We'll just go for this Iona right away. Hopefully we hit some Beldums or some Beldum search options or anything like that. We do get some options over here. So we'll start with this Great Ball, which is, doesn't even hit a Beldum, which really surprises me. But thankfully this Nest Ball here will hit us one of the Beldums. We have the Evolutions in our hand. And now I'm just going to go for, I'll put this Dialga on the bench and we'll just go for the Metal Coating. The reason that I wanted to do that is, you know, just in case. You never know what exactly your opponent is going to have in their hand. Maybe they have a, you know, Charizard to power up this Arceus plus the Arceus V-Star plus the Choice Belt and the Switching card and they can KO this uh, Origin Form Dialga in one shot. So sometimes it's important to just kind of play around with your counts and make sure that you're benching the appropriate Pokemon. 
and our opponent's going for the Arvin. See what I mean? They grab that choice belt, so I'm guessing they're going to Ultra Ball, get the Arc V-Star. The Arc V-Star can get them the um, Charizard line, which can then get them three Fire Energy, and if they have a Switch or something in their hand, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble because that uh, what's it called? We can get knocked out by that Arceus with the Choice Belt and the 3 Energy on it. I didn't want to immediately lose the game here, so that is why I went for that play. I also want to hold these Amazenta in case they choose to play down a Luminion, or we can mix up the prize trade if they decide, you know, to knock out two um, Dialgas somehow, some way. We can go to a single prize board, go for the Zamazenta play. Then, if they, we leave them on one prize remaining, we can drop Mew EX, then use Genome Hacking on. Um, Burning Darkness, and it will be able to KO a Charizard in one hit. So that's important to note. But we, our opponent's got a Moltres down. That's interesting. Here comes a Charizard EX. And this Moltres is an interesting card because it actually doesn't hit us for weakness. So I'm not really worried about getting hit by that. But it does set them up to get a KO with Arceus V-Star. So that's important to keep in mind as well here. Um, they're going to just start, okay, powering up the Zard, powering up the Arc. We'll see what they decide to do. Attach a Fire Energy to this Arc. And they're going to pass. Okay, so I'm not, like, super concerned about this. Um, Mew EX is a fine card to get. We can start evolving some of our guys up over here. Now, I'm debating, do I want to put this Mew into play at this point? I don't know for sure. I think, optimally, I'll go for a Metal Maker first, see what I can hit. One Metal Energy is a little bit tragic. It means we are one short here. Um, but I am thinking, like, I don't want to put this Mew down. I'll put the Zamazenta into play. And yeah, we are going to KO this Radzard anyway. So I'll start with the Concealed cards, see what I get here. Another Dialga is fine. We can start preparing this. And yeah, I don't really want to put this Mew down because then they can just take in a, a one prizer immediately. But I'll start with this Metal Blast. I don't want to leave that Dialga open to getting KO'd either um on the bench by like a choice belt or something because i know they have it in hand so i'll wait for an iono to put you know to go into the uh bad prize cards i should say where charger is going to be in one shot range of us and i doubt they'll iono us here they're opting to go for another arvin that makes sense probably grabbing a buddy buddy and another tool card maybe something like a defiance band um they're grabbing a counter catcher which is really interesting maybe counter catching the matang which uh, could hurt us a little bit, but I'm actually not like that concerned if they KO it because I still get another knock or another hit in with Dialga. They can't KO the Dialga, then I can go for that burning dart or that star Kronos, and boom, Bob's your uncle. It's gonna be a good time. Now we'll see what exactly we can do over here. Again, don't want to put any more liabilities onto the bench if I can avoid it. So we'll see what we draw. We draw a super rod, which is fine here. And I think at this point, I kind of need to put the Mew into play just so I can guarantee some draws. We'll do the Mew. We'll Super Rod all of these back in. They're all good to have. Because I do need to get an attachment this turn as well. And we'll restart netting ourselves. Double Iono. I got to get one Beldum down. At, like, I mean, I have to. So we'll just go for the Iono here. We get the Beldum. We get the energy. That's what I wanted as well. Now... We could Prime Catcher, but it's definitely more important to save it. Throw this Beldum down. We have the Matang for next turn. We'll just attach to this Dialga and go for a big Metal Blast. Now, it's possible we just gave them Boss, then they can Boss the Mew EX. But something important to note is that we've put both of their primary damage mod tools to the bottom of the deck. So even an Iono is not going to get them out. And they do, or they have already used two Arvin. So both of those are, like, the chances of them getting more Arvin is low. Here's a Nest Ball though, which will shuffle the deck for them, probably getting that other Charmander into play. And if we can just kind of destroy their board of Charizards, which is very possible with our current hand and the potential of a um, Star Kronos here, then I think we'll be in a good spot. They're gonna retreat to the Arceus and that is going to allow us to begin um, powering up our Dialga with this Matang. I doubt we're going to see a boss play. I mean, I'm hoping we don't see a boss play here because that would suck, but they're opting to get that Moltres prepped and ready to go. So we'll see what they do. Uh, we have the Prime Catcher in our hand. We have kind of all the ingredients to make something magical happen here. 
So we will just wait and see. Again, we have this Zamazenta to respond to the KO. They have their Moltres to respond to a KO here. And I'm like, the way I want to do this, another Matang, isn't actually too optimal right now. But I want to go for this Metal Maker first and foremost, see what we can land. One Metal Energy is all we need. So now we're in Star Kronos range. And I think I definitely want to go for, you know, Prime Catcher the Zard knock it out then try and boss the Arceus knock it out so that way we're just one KO away from winning and I think that's going to be my goal we're definitely going to get this Zard up here lead the Mew because it will treat for free well with the Jacques this turn I think I just want more draw off of restart so then we can get a boss just like that for the following turn now we'll go for the Star Kronos and you can kind of see here how the deck plays you don't immediately need that turn to Star Kronos which is what a lot of people were thinking lots of decks are pretty slow right now so getting the Star Kronos off means that we just have the guaranteed KO on the Ark next turn and then what's this little Moltres gonna do they're going to uh you know leave the Charmander we get another turn going on we need a single attachment to be able to KO this Arceus now we'll go for the boss on the Arceus eliminating their primary threats and Matang's Metal Maker is going to make some metal for this Dialga. Nothing happening just yet, but we can go for the Concealed Cards, draw some more cards. Um, we have another boss, which is pretty good. That means we can boss a little guy, kill with this Dialga. But for now, I'm thinking the Metal Blast is all we need to do. We have Mew on board to prevent some Iono Cheese from happening. And just like that, we've swung this game way back in our favor, thanks to the power of, you know, continued boss with that Star Kronos. They can respond with the Moltres, but it will get, or we, with one more energy, I should say, it will get KO'd by Metal Blast. Um, there's going to go for a Super Rod. And that is going to get them some of their Zard cards back. Even if they respond with a um, Radiant Charizard here, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. They can throw another Charizard EX in our face. That won't matter a whole lot if they need to have an Iono or something here. It's just an Infernal Ring, Wings, which guarantees us the game against this Charizard EX deck. I mean, they were playing the Bidoofs as well. They didn't, they had a strong turn one, but after that, they kind of faltered a little bit. Now we're going to be doing that clean 120, just attach for turn and boom, just like that. Goodbye, Moltres. It was a good response to that Dialga, but we just, even with only one Matang in play, we just got so set up and it was really hard for them to deal with our continued pressure and the extra turn thanks to Star Kronos. So what do you think of my Dialga V-Star decklist? This deck is insanely fun to play. I actually think it's pretty strong right now. Don't tell anybody that. And I've really been having like a surprisingly good time. I was initially not super sold on Matang when it first released because you don't see the energies as you don't see as many energy at a single hit. And you know, it takes a while to get them all into play. And that's why we were going with TM Evo and going all these other routes. But after EOIC this past weekend, seeing Jacques and seeing how strong it is in just getting multiple Pokemon into play easily, I think that's kind of the bread and butter of this deck and makes it what or what makes it really work. You don't need more than a 3-3 Dialga line. You don't need more than one Mew EX and just have a bunch of ball search. Now the deck does have a little bit of room to actually play around with some things. I am playing, like I said, two Capturing Aroma, three Great Ball, four Nest Ball, three Ultra Ball, three Buddy Buddy Poffin. And that is going to let us, you know, kind of hopefully guarantee a bunch of Pokemon on the bench turn one and potential Pokemon turn two and so on like that. You could be, you know, you could utilize this for other reasons you can ch change these cards out if you want to put another iona win because we're only running three or another cypher maniac you could you know supporters is the one part of this deck that feels a little bit iffy sometimes i think a good card for this deck could actually be poke gear because we have a lot of variety of supporters like Jacques, like two boss there's ways that we need to um maneuver around certain angles and certain situations so poker gear could give you a little bit more supportive variety instead of just playing whatever gets into your hand here vitality band is another really cool card um because it lets you attach it and then amp you not amp you very much uh star chronos a iron hands or roaring moon ex or something like that on you know because they have 230 hp uh, i could also see something like a defiance band being in this deck 250 isn't really what matters but it just lets you do more damage without needing more energy on the Dialga. So for example, if you need to hit an obscure number, you can throw the Defiance Band on your Dialga. And then from there, you can attack with um, the Dialga the following turn. 
after you use your Star Chronos and so on like that. But I'm really loving this deck. I think it's a whole lot of fun to play and actually a good bit decent. So please try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think of Dialga V-Star? What do you like, what do you dislike? What do you keep and what would you change about my list? Comment down below. I do read all my comments. I haven't been responding lately. I apologize, but I do read all of your comments and what you have to say. And subscribe to the Hitman Channel because I'm posting multiple, multiple Pokemon Trader Card King videos every single week. And with all that said and done, thank you once again for watching. Until next time, Hitmon Channing out.